Hello everybody and welcome to Paranormal at the Boneyard and my name is Kyla, your hostess with the mostess and I have a very special guest with us today. I have my friend Jennifer. Hi guys. Hello. And um, she is with me. She's my very, very first guest on this vlog and uh, she has had lots of paranormal experiences herself. We are on a street where she has had many of these experiences. So we just decided today is gonna to be a special day and we're gonna walk up and down the street, go over old memories, stop every once in a while, listen to loud cars, <laughs> and uh, just talk about those stories. Cause I've had a couple of story, uh, stories as well, not, not as many as her, not as exciting, but you know, some stories. And this is also a bittersweet day because I haven't seen Jen in almost uh, two years, I think, with yeah. the COVID thing. I saw her only once. And uh, yeah, she works with children who have immune deficiencies. So she, because of her job, was not allowed to have a life. And so, <laughs> True story. <laughs> so, so I haven't seen her since, but so this is yay. We finally get to see each yay. other. And now she's leaving me in two weeks. She's moving 13 hours away. So I won't be able to see her anymore. So yeah, hearts broken. broken. So, <laughs> so we're going to make the most of this. We're going to have fun and we're going to tell scary stories and then we're going to head to a park and we're going to just sit there and chat and have some fun and bring you along for some of that ride. So Jen, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Hi guys. Um, so I'm Jen and I used to actually work a lot on Auto Street. I was here probably every day for a good solid eight years in many roles and uh, throughout the multiple places that I used to work on the street uh, definitely have been some interesting times and uh, fortunately Kyla's been able to be witness to some of them so at least I got some proof and vouching and yeah so it's let's enjoy this day yes beautiful day for November so definitely. okay here we, we are go. still on Ottawa Street and uh, we're not gonna name the locations on Ottawa Street because the shop owners who are presently here, they might not want to hear the stuff about, oh, it's haunted and stuff like that. You know, me, I'd be like, yeah, it's ghosts, come on in, join them. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, maybe that wouldn't sound good because join them, that means you'd have to die. But anyway, I have no problem. Some people are drawn to the haunted places and some people don't want, you know, and so for the business owners, respect for them, we're not gonna name the actual addresses on Ottawa Street. We'll just say Ottawa Street itself. And personally, I honestly think that Ottawa Street is loaded because of so much oh, yes. history. Agreed. Hamilton itself is such an old town. There's so much history in it that I think it's, you can't go to a building and not find something. Exactly. And uh, I think a lot of places on Ottawa Street, because they are so old and they're, they're being preserved, which yes. is a good thing, I think almost, probably almost every building here has some sort of spiritual activity going on in it. That's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll start off with one story that when, when Jen had a store here on Ottawa Street, um, it was they, when they went from one location to another, and this was the first location their store was at, and uh, she and I were just sitting there talking, we were chatting away, and uh, not really saying much. I think the store was even closed by this time. It was late at night. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden there was a box that was over here, and we heard whoosh, and I was like, and I looked at her, and we looked at the box, and I said, did that thing just, and as I'm like pretty much saying that, I just sort of pointed at it, we actually saw it go, and it went from, you know, here, it was like here to here, and you see it in your peripheral vision, you're like, did I just see what, what I, I just saw? And so, and just when I went to go question it, and we're looking at it, it went, it went about maybe a meter, meter and a half Indeed. to the one side, and I was like, and Jen was like, <laughs> And that's pretty much where we left it. But uh, yeah, so that was, that's the only actual poltergeist activity I've ever personally experienced. Usually I just see spirits hear singing or something weird like that, but I've never actually seen things move. So that was my personal experience at the store. It's the only one I've had. So I know Jen has had oh, more than that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, on one occasion we bought, there was a neighborhood garage sale. So we bought a little chalkboard and we put it in the building and then we left for the day and then we come back a few hours later and it says my name and my partner's name on this chalkboard and no one was able to enter the premise at all. I and didn't it, know this one. Exactly. Oh my God, I didn't yeah. know this story. And we're like, uh, okay, all right, all right. We're good with that one. And then we had a couple people over helping us make things because we were a crafty type of store where we handmade all of our items. And uh, 
a bit of a to do happened. Someone came, one of our neighbors came in upset, not with anything that we did, just they were having their own personal issues. And as they were starting to crescend and have their big blowout, doors just started flying open for no reason. Doors that were dead bolted locked. Wow. And it was just a big ghost of wind. And um, also, other things uh, since that we've left this location. Um, talking to, with the current store owners, they actually had to cleanse it because there was quite the heavy presence within here. And when some days I would walk into the store and just in the corners you would feel this dark shadow mm -hmm. just hovering over you and you're like, okay. You never felt we're alone. We're good today. Never. Never felt ever. alone. And that might have something to do with someone actually passing away in this building before we even moved in. But who's to say, you know, I mean, buildings have history and we don't know history. But that is, it's been things moving, things hidden, things returning, the fairies, the, the ghosts, the yeah. spirits. And I mean, yeah, you never know what has happened to a person here. There's been a lot of history. This area was not the most savory place at one time. And now, you know, and, and it's, you know, so you don't quite know what happens. Some, you know, yeah. it might have just brought in some negative energy from how this person passed on. And it might not even be that person. It might just right. be the energy left behind from a bad situation or something. Um, but I do have a question about that, though. Yeah. Um, I, I think I know who you're talking about, mm -hmm. and it's just, um, could it be, rather than negative spiritual energy that was causing this problem, do you think maybe it could have been him? Very much could You know, be. could it have been psychokinesis? Absolutely could Yeah, I was, I was wondering that, because I'm like, I know who this is, so I'm thinking it, yeah. it could be possible. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, uh, energy was really up in that moment, and just as someone was like, ah, and then just... Yeah, boom, and yeah. It, you felt it, the power, the force, and it took your breath away. And then we just calmed down and everything was fine, and we put things back, and then <laughs> sunny merry days from there on. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and what about, you uh, went from uh, the one store, then you went to a new location, we so on the same street, actually. Indeed. Yes. Was I know I never felt alone in there, but I never had any experiences in that right. building. So, did um, you have anything go on in there? You know what? I, I, let me touch on maybe the reason, possibly, why we felt never alone in there. It was a used goods store from past military. Yes. So maybe those those types of articles do hold yeah. residual energy. Um, but did I have any? Oh. Indeed. Lights <laughs> flickering, things just turning on when it shouldn't, and things you know you shut off. Yeah. Things you know you put away, and then all of a sudden are exactly not where you put them. Yeah. <laughs> or definitely on when you know that yep. you shut it off. I had one where they, you know, spirits where they like to hide things on you, oh, and, then the, and then maybe like 40 minutes later they'll go, here it is, and they'll exactly. put it like somewhere where if you had walked past it a million times, yeah. you would have seen it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, that wasn't there. Really, yeah. it wasn't. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna wander along and see what else we can find and what else trouble we can and get into. And we are back, okay. and we're just at this lovely mural. We like the colors very, very much, so had to stand by it. And I don't know if you'd be able to see it all to move the tripod a little bit. Nope, can't see much. All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're still on Ottawa Street, and we uh, I've got one story myself to tell. Uh, Jen didn't actually have any experiences at this place, but I did, one. And it was another place where you never felt entirely alone. This was, uh, Jen also not only had her own store, but she was also working for the farmer's market on street on Ottawa Street. It was called the Ottawa Street Farmer's Market, go figure. And uh, she was in charge of it for a while there. And so she was a very busy girl for a long time there. <laughs> and uh, there was one time where she was finishing up work and she was in the office. And this office used to be an old bank on the corner. And uh, so I was gonna hang out with her afterwards and I was in the shop with her. And I think she was taking out trash or she was getting rid of something. She was taking something out of the plate, the building itself and she was stepping outside the building. And while she was stepping outside the building, um, I was just sitting there and had that feeling, you know, you're never alone. I said, somebody's here, but I'm just gonna ignore it because I don't feel like chatting. So I was just like, so I'm just sitting there. And all of a sudden, it was a door. I think the door led to the basement. It was a door. It was closed. And the door handle, it looked like somebody was trying to open the door. Like, ch -ch 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 -ch. and I was like, oh, okay. All right. It wasn't like some the, the wind was sitting there pushing the door. Like, you know, you have a, like a wind gust going sure. through sometimes yeah. and, and the door would be open. This was somebody holding onto the door handle going like this. 
but they couldn't open the door. I don't know if the door was ever locked. I don't know if that was a locked door. It, or, it always was. It was? Always. Okay, so they were yeah. trying to... So if it was a bank, maybe somebody was trying to steal something. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so that's pretty much it there. Um, but yeah, this is a very old street. Um, it yeah. probably, I don't know if it's the oldest street in town. Um, we're going to take you to a historical landmark on this street now. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of it. But um, yeah, it's just the, the buildings are so old. Everything is just so beautiful here. Um, and maybe as we walk down to the location, I'll, I'll hold it up and you can look at some of the little spaces and stuff like that. And you got to look at yeah. them. And you know, there's got to be something going on in every oh, single one of these buildings. Absolutely. Uh, just rich with heritage. Yeah. And Stories. So, and it's gone from, you know, like an industrial town to an unsavory town to more of a better town. Now it's an artsy fartsy artistic town. I know because I'm artsy fartsy, so I'm here all the time. And uh, yeah, we're just going to keep on going. We're going to take you down to a historical landmark right now and uh, we're going to have fun. So, awesome. and then we're going to go to Gage Park. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're on the actual street. We're going to walk a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got to get out of the way because <laughs> somebody's Buick wants in to where we're standing. How dare they? <laughs> but yeah, there's a, it's an old street. There's old buildings. Um, I haven't been here in a while, and it's changed a lot just since I've been here. So some stores are moving from down the street up the street. Indeed. Some stores are being sold altogether. A lot, and a lot more fresh green markets around here now, which is yep. sustainable foods good. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a couple of vegan places here that I absolutely love. They're delicious. Oh, Even if you're not so. vegan, it tastes delicious. Yeah. Hi, really puppy girl. Hi. Oh, baby. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, and this street is also popular because they've been doing a lot of filming on the street in the past right. couple of years. The Umbrella Academy for yep. one. Yeah, they've done that. Um, I don't know what else. I know the Umbrella Academy for sure, but there's always something being filmed here because of the old buildings, because of the history of it and the way it looks. It's just awesome. There's a couple more little buildings there. See, it's just so old and there's so much history that you know somebody's Haunting something. I mean, who wouldn't want to haunt some of these places? <laughs> oh, look, they're, they're fixing up. That used to be an old bar, the one that's walked off right now. I remember it used to be an old bar, yep. uh, apparently really good for cougars. So if you had a thing for <laughs> cougars there, and we're not talking the, like the hot cougars like us. You know? Indeed. <laughs> we're talking the cougars that, you know, could put their lipstick on with the cigarette in their mouth still. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> oh, well, I told you I'd bring mean? you to a historical space and this is it. I'm not kidding. This is the Tim Hortons. That was the location of the very first Tim Hortons um, in Canada. Not just uh, in Hamilton, but in Canada. This is the very first Tim Hortons. Um, not this one. This building is a new building and uh, the old one was torn down. But I think even before the old building, um, it was uh, a gas station, if I remember correctly from what I read. I believe it was a gas station and it had some seats that like those stools that you sit at a, like a little table at the counter. Um, and that's where Tim Horton started Tim Hortons. And it went from there to being a donut shop. And then that building, it was, it was not in good condition at all. So they tore it down and they built this one here. It's a two level. And upstairs is a museum, so you get to see some of the foods and stuff that they've got, or they had, and uh, some of the prices that they had, and you're just like, ugh. But <laughs> and, um, and uh, yeah, and there's a statue. I'll take you to the statue of Tim Horton. And um, I just put this one here because it says it's been serving since 1964. So this building, or this shop, Tim Hortons, opened in 1964. And uh, wait for the truck to go by. <laughs> We're going to walk over to the statue. I did have a friend at one time who, who is not Canadian, and he did ask me, he asked me, he says, I see Tim Hortons everywhere, and I'm like, well, yeah, it's a Canadian thing. We, we love our Tim Hortons, we love our Tim's coffee and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he said, well, was there ever actually somebody named Tim Horton? And I said, absolutely. And uh, I said, he was a hockey player, and he was the one that opened the shop, and he played for the Leafs. I honestly don't know of any other place he played for, but he played for the Toronto Police. Here's the statue, right in front of the building. And uh, he said, well, you know, what happened? I said, well, he opened a donut shop called Tim Hortons where you get your coffee and your donuts. And uh, sadly, I believe the year was 1974, he was killed in a car accident. Actually, not too far from here. It was up on the highway up by uh, St. Catharines area. So he did not, have a long life, but he's left a long, long, long legacy 
Tim Hortons is Canadian, very Canadian, and uh, basically in Hamilton, you can't go on a corner without seeing Tim Hortons somewhere. So, and uh, yeah, just wanted to tell you here a little bit of history. Little bit of history, tidbit there for you. This was the very first Tim Hortons. This is the location. 1964. Okay, so I am inside Tim Hortons now. I hope you can hear me with the mask on. And yes, this is my regular mask. But I just wanted to take you to this little spot here. This is like a little museum piece that they've got here. You can see behind me, there's a picture of Tim Horton. This is a display. It's not real food. It's just a display of what they used to sell here. There used to be a lot of donuts. They used to sell eclairs. Pretty cool stuff. If you look up above, I don't know if you can see it. Some original prices, a little depressing nowadays. And what used to be really cool about Tim Hortons is they used to sell cakes. I remember these, I'm, this, I'm that old, that I can remember the cakes being sold in these one little refrigerated cabinets where they would spin around and you could look at the cakes that you wanted and stuff like that. Oh, okay, here's another picture of Tim Horton. Apparently he played for Buffalo. <laughs> So I just wanted to take you in here just to show you this. It really has nothing to do with ghosts. Just a piece of Canadian history. I think it's pretty cool. So, and then they have like uniforms and stuff down this aisle here and stuff. So, yeah, nothing spooky about it. Just uh, the ghosts on my mask. That's all. <laughs> okay, this is weird. We're doing a thing about ghosts, and uh, we're in the parking lot of Gage Park right now. And uh, as we were here, we're not going to point out which vehicle it was because we don't want people to go, hey, there's a car over there that's wide open. But we get here and I didn't see it. Jenna actually saw it, actually. She said, did that car door just open all by itself? And I was just yep. like, she, so she saw it open all by itself. Yeah. And uh, myself, I saw the door open, but I didn't see it open all by itself. So I just thought that was interesting that we're sitting here talking about ghosts and then she sees uh, a car door vehicle just yep. open all by itself. So... We're just sorry. I started going, does anybody have a such and such vehicle? Your door's wide open. And I'm like, maybe I shouldn't be yelling that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I closed their door and was like, geez, I hope they have their keys. So, but yeah, found that interesting that we're talking about ghosts and a door opens all by itself. So freaky, scary stuff, kids. Indeed. Okay. We have arrived at Gage Park in Hamilton. And this is the only reason why I wanted to come here is because of this band shell behind me here. I, I don't know why. I just think it's really cool and uh, a lot of people have performed here so I just wanted to show you what it looked like because Jen and I are going to actually go and sit in the band shell and talk to you there. Okay, we've been outside in the wind, our hair is all over the place but we're having fun so we are up on the stage. Uh, I have not been to Gage Park in years. I think the last time I was here was like 2013 when you guys had a little show that was exactly. here and you were yeah. selling your, your products here. Indeed. Yeah. Um, as a vendor, but yeah, I think it was the last time I was here, so that's a while ago. And uh, but yeah, this band shell, uh, I've always wanted to be on the stage, so there you are, we're on the stage, debut, Let's Ta -da! Go. <laughs> make them laugh. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I, I, I wanted to come to Gage Park A because I haven't been here in years. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with this band shell, yeah. Um, but I tried to look up ghost stories and I couldn't find no anything, same. yeah, anything in Gage Park, and that makes me. So I, you know, I know who Gage Park is named after. He's named after Mr. Gage. So I found a lot of stuff on him because mm -hmm. the Battle of Stony Creek was on his property in the War of 1812. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you know, like there was that. So there's ghosts and there's ghosts up on Battlefield Creek or Battlefield Park. Right. But I was like, there was nothing here. Like, it was like, this is named after him. But it's an old park. You'd think mm -hmm. there'd be something. Right. I heard, I think, I can't remember if I read it or if it was word of mouth, I think it might have been word of mouth, that I heard a story that they were doing a show on this band shell mm -hmm. and there was a person who didn't belong dancing on the stage and they didn't know who this person was. Right. And um, I don't know if maybe the other performers were aware of this person or anything, but people in the audience, but not everybody saw this right. person. So people were trying to figure out who this person was and then they weren't there anymore. Wow. That's the only story that wow. I've heard. And I don't know if that's true. I don't know if it might just be a, a tale, a tall tale. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. But that's, I couldn't find anything else. 
um, found out the people who performed here, like this place has been great for some performances. There's been every, like a lot of Canadian bands, obviously. There's been The Pursuit of Happiness and David mm -hmm. Usher and David Wilcox and oh. Burton Cummings and Terry Clark. Indeed. Uh, Fozzie was here at one point, Finger Eleven. Um, Big Rack. Big, big Rack, uh, yeah. Great Big Sea, mm -hmm. Junk House, Blackie and the Roadhouse Kings. Right. It, it just goes on to Philosopher Kings. It goes on and on and on. The, mm -hmm. the amount of talent that has been on this stage is phenomenal. And I do feel blessed just to be touching the same concrete that they mm -hmm. did. So, And uh, you just said, our, one of our, our dear friends who is a, a guitarist and a musician himself, yeah. his name is Joe Towers. Apparently he performed on here too, he has. which yeah. I did not know. So, <laughs> And then there is photographic proof of that yeah. one. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't know. like. The thing is, when I, when I come here, though, I feel like I can feel the energy mm -hmm. of like a spiritual energy here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I think there's something here. Or am I just picking up the residual energy of people that were here watching shows? Like that's, I, I don't know. Maybe, but you know? you know what? This, like you said, this, this stage has seen so many talented, beautiful, amazing artists. And it has to be left something behind. And we have an audience in yes. the background, a little blondie squirrel. Yeah, are we, we've, our, our, the squirrels are overtaking us right Indeed. now. Like, literally walking here, there's nothing but squirrels. We've seen squirrels climb, climbing up the clamshell part of this thing here, and, and now they're coming towards us. I think they want us to have food, and if we don't, right. I'm kind of scared of what's going to happen if we don't give them something to eat. So They might be shoulder buddies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a nice cap, and they are free to have that if, if they so choose, I, rather than become slave to the squirrels. Offerings, Offerings so. are important. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, uh, so one question I wanted to ask you, though, um, aside from just ghosts, like you've, you've seen ghosts, you've heard ghosts, things yes. like that getting attacked by leaves <laughs> um but ha um anything else like do you have like premonitions and things like that and oh absolutely is it, like just dreams or do you have them spontaneously while you're spontaneously. awake spontaneously wow. um i've had thoughts just have gone come through my head and two days sometimes a week later it comes true mm -hmm. or sometimes it, i think of something and then 30 seconds later it comes true wow um and i've definitely felt some spirits before um there was this. There was a time where I actually had a family member. They were on their deathbed. They were a young fam family member, and um, towards the end, uh, this child she was playing in the sky with her angels. And then later on that night, movies that were on the back of the TV ended up getting thrown forward over two feet. Wow! And um, in hours before she passed. Um, there was footsteps and no one was walking around. Oh, cool. Yeah, oh, it was. Not cool so much because she passed, but. Yeah. <laughs> but it was very interesting. And mm -hmm. I said, like, you know, you wake up and the next morning, you're like, who, who, was, who was walking around last night? And like, Nobody. And it was just, it kept happening and happening. And uh, there's been times where I would, every time where I wear green, I would sometimes just get a little tap on my shoulder and I'd look and there's no one there. But you definitely felt that tap, like it was, was a distinctive. Was green her favorite color or something like that? Indeed. Or? Oh, oh was. she was okay. very much a very okay. bright spiritual. Yeah. Oh, she was a bright light. And <laughs> uh, a few years ago, I actually got to go to uh, the medium. Uh, there was a spiritual church on Ottawa Street, mm -hmm. and uh, they had a training mediums that night. And they they said that they were done for the night, but then someone spoke up and they said, "No, I got one more." They pointed at me, and they said. Eight years old. I'm like, mm hmm. Really bright, colorful, laughs, hugs. And I'm Aww. like, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. And so it was confirmed that this person, that this family member does follow me around. And that gave me so much comfort. And I find crayons randomly when there shouldn't <laughs> be crayons. And it's, it's, it's a remarkable and it's awesome. I've had that not with crayons, but with dimes. Interesting. Yeah, like I'll have, um, and somebody told me one time, um, you know, if you find dimes, that means uh, somebody's looking after you, you're the spirit from the spirit world. Really? And I don't know if that's true or whatever, but yeah, uh, yeah like there was one time, I remember I was doing a play and we were in this building that was abandoned mm -hmm. and that's where we were changing our clothes and stuff like that. And every single day that I went into there, I found a dime. Interesting. And there should, no be, oh. there should not be dimes in there because there's nothing in the building, right? right? So it was yeah. like, and some place that you were, 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 were. And there's a dime there, you know, and it's like, but I was here yesterday. No dime was here and nobody, mm -hmm. you know, like, so I thought that was interesting. So a similar thing, but Indeed, yeah. 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 Just the treasures that, that, the, that they leave for us to find mm -hmm. and just to let, let us know that we're not alone. 
so do you notice um, when you have your premonitions, are they like something something prompting it that, or does it just sort of just happen? Random. Really? Absolutely. Wow. Or like a person that I haven't thought of in like 20 years, and then all of a sudden I get a text this from a phone them, call or, or, yeah. or you hear something <laughs> about them in the news just recently, yeah. or yeah. you know, just like, oh, wouldn't it be interesting if this happened, and then all of a sudden, two minutes later, five minutes next week, it happens, and you're just like, huh, hmm. interesting. You know, I mean, people, skeptics could say, oh, coincidence, but sometimes it's just been too uncanny, too quick, Yeah. you know, to, to explain otherwise. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, I'm watching the dogs and the squirrels. <laughs> We're in a park, and it's a nice park, and it's a big park, and uh, mm -hmm. so, um, I, I guess that's it. I hope you had fun, Jen. I loved I, it. Thank you just, so much for having it's me. It's my very first interview, so I don't I know how it. I did. You did fantastic. And literally, it was just like, I don't know what I'm going to ask. I'll make her do all the talking. Indeed. So. Sure. <laughs> Not a give and take. We're good. <laughs> so that's it for Paranormal at the Boneyard for this week, and I nice. hope you have fun. And I'm gonna be missing my oh, friend. I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> so by the time this is filmed, she'll already or uh, on debut. It'll be uh, she'll already be gone. So, so <laughs> everybody have a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, just because your five senses can't detect it, doesn't mean it's not really there. So I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.